Hi, so teaching STEMS Conoid to an undergraduate student is uh, not a very easy job. They find it very difficult to understand uh, what is STEMS Conoid. So in this video, um, I have demonstrated STEMS Conoid in a very, very simple way so that uh, the undergraduate students uh, understand what is uh, STEMS Conoid. So all we need is a spherical lens, cylindrical lens and source of light. So I've used a mobile source of light. So stack the lens and shine the lights to get the image on a surface. So it's very, very simple. So this video would demonstrate how it is done. So, so mobile source of light, stack lens, shine the light, and then you would get an image on the screen. But only thing is just make sure that the source of light and the lens is all is in the same straight line. So what is term sconoid? When parallel ray of light fall on a convex astigmatic surface, the vertical ray of light would converge first and then the horizontal ray of light. Now that is because the vertical curvature is more curved. So that is why it would converge the ray of light much faster than the horizontal surface. And because of the difference in the convergence, we would get image different forms of image at different sections or at different um, like if for example if the retina was at uh, A then this is the image that you would get and if the word retina was at B and this is the image that you would get so it's because of the difference in the convergence of the ray of light we get different images at different sections so let's make it very simple. Now, why is that we get different images at different sections? So I have made it very simple. So all you have to understand is now this I have depicted the vertical ray of light as yellow and red here on a surface and the horizontal ray of light as blue. OK, so let's see how a vertical ray of light would fall on the screen at each section. So this picture shows that this is a vertical ray of light, okay? Now, as we learned that previously, we learned that uh, the hot vertical ray of light converges faster. So here the vertical ray of light is quite closer. It has converged here and they start diverging. And at this point, it is far apart. So let's see how the horizontal ray of light behaves. So this horizontal ray of light is far apart here but it converges it's coming closer here it's come closer and it is converged at the, this point and then it starts diverging so let's see what how we can create an image so now what i've done is i have joined the horizontal and the vertical dots okay so this i have joined to get various images so and these images that we have got now closely matches the image that is seen in Sturm's conoid. So at section A, this is how the image would look like. It is horizontally oval. At C, D and E, the images are quite circular. So this is called a circle of least diffusion. And at G, it is vertically oval. And at D and F, it is like a straight line. Now, because at B, the vertical ray of light is converged and at F the horizontal ray of light is converged that is why it looks like a straight line so to repeat again so let's see how we can demonstrate so you can see that we have captured the image on the screen just by using the stack lens and a mobile source of light you can see exactly it just looks like the image at F so entire bundle of rays is called as a Sturm's conoid and uh, the distance between two foci is called as focal interval of Sturm and C, D and E is a circle of least diffusion. That means to say that if this image falls on the retina, the patient is able to see relatively well. So in high degrees of mixed astigmatism, the circle of least confusion falls on the retina, hence the distant vision is found to be relatively good. So thank you very much. So friends, I think I have made it very simple. So thank you for your patient hearing.